Good afternoon and welcome to CIF Northern.TV's continuing coverage of the Northern Section Basketball Championships. Liberty Christian set to take on Durham from Acker Gymnasium in Chico, California. Liberty Christian in the white jerseys with the blue lettering. Durham in the blue jerseys with the navy blue lettering. They're going left to right. Liberty Christian right to left. We are underway. I am Jeff Kurtz alongside Ben Schneider as Liberty Christian quickly launches a shot. No good. Let's get you starting lineups first for Liberty Christian. Travis Dankson, Otar Pakadze, George Papashvili, Joseph Lynch, and Tyler Duncan are the starting five for Liberty Christian. Meanwhile, Durham is going to counter with Kyle LaMalfa, Trevor Sonstang, Jason Terrish, Will Sevdi, and Bryce Dayrude. And here's a quick look. Durham misses underneath. Put back, no. Liberty Christian comes into the game, the number one seed rated uh, rank, uh, with a 24 and one record led by head coach Todd Franklin. Durham, the number three seed, 19 and nine, led by head coach Mark Pacenti. Keys to the game, and you could already see a fast paced game we anticipate Ben Schneider. Absolutely, Liberty 24 and one on the year. Durham 19 and nine, both teams have a lot of energy here early on and good crowd as well. Durham. The blue faithful there, standing in the student section. A lot of energy here. This is just the second game. Curious to see what it'll be like by the time we do the sixth game today. No kidding. Well, it'll only fill up here as the games continue. Last year, Yard Liberty Christian lost in a heartbreaker to Trinity in overtime. As the ball loose on the floor, and we've got a foul against Otar Picadze. We're going to be talking about him quite a bit. An outstanding player for Liberty Christian. He actually helped force overtime last year with a three at the buzzer to force overtime. Almost had a chance to win it in that overtime period, but Trinity came away with the victory. So Liberty Christian looking for the championship today, and as Coach Todd Franklin told me before the game, and of course we run into a team with height, and that is including Kyle LaMalfa. LaMalfa at 6'8", the big center for Durham. Drive and score for the shortest player on the floor for Durham, Jason Terrish, their 5'10 point guard, we're tied at two. 6.25 remaining first quarter. And George Papashvili with a bucket for Liberty Christian. Folks, you are not going to want to stray from your computer too much in this game. There is going to be a lot of activity. Last year's game pushed into the 80s in Division 5. Rebound, Dankson. Quick outlet to Joseph Lynch, and then back to Picadze. Dumps down low, Papashvili hits. Good look down side. Papashvili, good position inside. All he had to do was take one dribble and put it up. He had an easy deuce. These two kids, George Papashvili and Otar Picadze from the Republic of Georgia, and they've been playing at Liberty Christian now for the last several years. A long way from home, but they've certainly made Liberty Christian home. Nice reverse layup underneath by Will Sevdi. On the floor. Foul on the floor. This one is going to go against Durham. It's going to be the first team foul against the Durham Trojans. And it's going to go against Jason Terrish. Papashvili swatted by LaMalfa. Here's Durham on the break. Good and defense there by LaMalfa, just staying at home. Easy block shot. Six foot eight junior. He's got long arms too. He does. And he'll be filling out later on. Yeah, put some muscle on that kid and yeah. he's he's ready for the big time. Nice three-point shot by Terrish. And Terrish faked like he was gonna go baseline, pulled up, hit the triple. Here's Picadze on the drive, and the ball's gonna be knocked out of bounds by Durham. Trojans enjoying their first lead of the game. I'm already impressed with Terrace too. Looks like he's a quick point guard. Anytime you can hit a couple threes early, that's going to make the defense play up on you, and then that opens up the drive and dish possibilities. Travis Dankson, a sophomore for Liberty Christian, misses the long three, and here comes Terrace up the floor. On the penetration, nice floater by Sevdi. These two teams have not faced each other this year. First look at each other, though they have played common opponents. Both teams? Oh, go ahead, Jeff. I was just saying, in particular, Trinity, nice layup underneath on the dish from Picadze. Duncan with the bucket. 
Trinity played Durham three times this year. Durham beat them twice. And that was the team that took out Liberty Christian in the championship game last year in the northern section. Really enjoying this pace here early on, Jeff. Both teams shooting the ball well, making good passes, playing good defense. Seen in other games, past section title games especially, both teams come out a little bit tight. Not the case here. Both teams came ready to play today, that's for sure. Bryce Dayrud missed that long three. We're, We're midway through the first quarter. We're on pace for a high 70s type game. Certainly by the pace of play. 20 on the shot clock. Liberty Christian taking their time offensively. The Cods say around a pick, pick and roll stolen. It wasn't there, should have kept it. Terrish takes it all the way in. Left hand block. Papashvili, nice job. The ball hits the baseline. Probably just as well. He threw it right to Dayru. He would have had an easy path to the basket. Always risky when you save it in front of your own basket. In a lot of cases, Jeff, you're, you're almost better off not saving it than the other team take it out of bounds because you want to save it right in front of your basket and give up an easy deuce. Officials discussing whether or not they need to reset the shot clock. Our lead official, John Cascarina, and then John Cox and Daniel Sanchez round out our three-man officiating crew this afternoon. Three-pointer, Sevdi. He's got seven points here early on. Picadze on the drive gets the block call, and he'll head to the free throw line. That's two from the exact same spot in that corner. It's a, it's a shorter three. Higher percentage from the corner there. That foul went against Bryce Dayrude, his first. Picadze hits the first free throw. Scoreboard just seems to be giving us the basic. Doesn't give us the players out on the court right now. No, but into the ball game, Josh Ellenwood for the first time for Liberty Christian. So Ellenwood out there with Lynch, Picadze, Papashvili, and Dankson. Into the game for the first time for Durham, Will Belton. And he will join Sevdi, Terish, LaMalfa out on the floor. And then also Bryce Deiru. That second free throw also good for Picadze. Two point game, 3.07 remaining first quarter. Terrish left wing. This is Belton along the baseline. Tries to give to his big man. Tough pass to handle. It's gonna be tracked down by Lynch. Liberty Christian right to left. And Lynch will have it poked away by Terrish. Terrish able to recover after letting his guy go by him. Gotta love the enthusiasm of the Durham, Durham student section right behind their bench across the floor to our left. We've seen a lot of it. Student sections do not sit down during the games. If you're not wanting to stand up during a game, don't sit behind the student section. We got a foul on the play, and this one is going to go against Belton, and that is his, or excuse me, Chris Craven, and that is his pers first personal foul. Good pump fake. Nice drive, couldn't get it to go. Papashvili the follow, and he's got six. And we're tied at 12, 225 left first quarter. Good position there by Papashvili. No hesitation, too. That's what you want to see your big man. Get the rebound, go straight back up. Don't want to put the ball back on the ground unless you're taking that one power dribble. Parrish has it stolen by Dankson. He wisely backs it out. Nice job in transition. Durham gets back. It's a long three, side of the rim, no. Rebound goes to LaMalfa. And then the ball's knocked away from him. Durham will keep it. Just under two minutes to play opening quarter. What do you think about that last three by Dankson? Um, no, I don't like it. It's it's too deep for one. He's got a knuckleball rotation too, so that goes to show me he's not putting enough wrist in his shot, Jeff. High post, LaMalfa. 70 near side. Skip pass, this is Craven. 16, now 15 on the shot clock. 
short on the three-point shot by Teresh. Layup strong, and then Papashvili's going to the line. He's having a good first quarter right now. After that miss by Ellenwood, he followed up with a play, and he's heading to the free throw line. Yeah, very active down low on the block. That foul is the second one on Dayrood, so he's probably going to have to go to the bench. Papasvili short on the first free throw. So Dayrood out of the game and Mark Gersnich in. Meanwhile, into the game, Tyler Duncan for Liberty Christian. He's back in the ball game. Both Second coaches free throw's good. Looking sharp. Todd Franklin for Liberty Christian. Mark <laughs> Pacenti for Durham. Right, it's almost the house of style in here on both sidelines. <laughs> right. Craven double teamed out high. Breaks down with the dribble, takes it all the way in, and happens to hand it to his teammate for the layup. Sevdi with the, or excuse me, that's. Gersnich in the game, freshly checked in with a bucket. Point guard, that's what you want to do. Keep your dribble alive. Good things will happen to you if you don't pick up your dribble too far away from the hoop. Lob inside, shot missed by Duncan on the high-low, and the rebound to Durham. Luxury for Terrace now. He's got an extra point guard out there in Craven. Yeah, Craven's giving him a lot of energy off the bench here early on. I think it's a dyed mohawk. That's right, not a bad look. Battle for the rebound underneath. We're gonna have a loose ball foul on Papashvili. That'll be his first. 35.9 seconds remaining in the first quarter. One point ball game, Durham up. Pace has slowed down a little bit from the first couple of minutes. It was pretty It was pretty quick. Yeah, it was. So oh. both teams feeling each other out. You mentioned they didn't play each other this year. Terrace with an air ball on the three and the rebound to Dankson. And with the shot clock turned off, Coach Todd Franklin tells his player, let's go for one. 20 seconds remaining in the quarter. This is Ellenwood. Ellenwood gives to Dankson. And now out to Lynch. Lynch has 12 seconds left. Now 10. You want to go about five here, Jeff. Seven, six, left wing, five, four. And we've got a whistle and a foul. That'll be the fifth team foul against Durham, 4.2 seconds remaining. And that one is going to go against Terrish, and Terrish has two. So that's cause for concern, and quickly up off the bench, Trevor Sonstang will replace Terrish. So two players in foul trouble right now for Mark Pacenti's Durham Trojans. Into the game, Terrell Fuller will replace Papishvili. Inbounds pass near sideline, Lynch. Gives to Dankson. Dankson with three, with two, takes it all the way, goes up trying to draw the foul, will not. Four tenths of the second left, and the ball off Durham. Looked like he was fouled. I don't know. Well, he was trying to get the call, but the officials let him play through. All he got time for here is a quick touch. Oh, almost good for Dankson, but that will end the first quarter. Durham leading at 14 to 13 in this Division Five Boys Championship game in the Northern Section. You are watching the action on your home for high school sports in the Northern Section, CIFNorthern.tv. You can watch highlights or replay of today's game in our on-demand section. And you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right now on CIFNorthern.tv. Click on buy DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIFNorthern.tv. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIFNorthern.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. Well, Will Sevdi leading Durham with seven first quarter points. Meanwhile, George Papashvili equaling him with seven for Liberty Christian. And Durham has the early lead, the number three seed versus the number one seed. The number one, Liberty Christian. Durham, good quarter for them, though, so far, both leading teams, by one. Both teams, yeah. Durham uh, played with a lot of energy, a lot of fire. I like this little backup point guard that's come in, too. He's given them a lot of uh, Craven, a little extra energy off the bench. Craven, Gersnich, Sevdi, Lamalfa, 
on the floor along with Sonstang. I'm trying to see if LaMalfa, I, I can't I've really figured out his game on offense. He's only taking that one shot, six to eight. You know he can play defense, has a couple blocks, so I'm curious to know if the, the young fellow has any, any game down low. I mean, he's got the frame. Papashvili, Pakadze, Duncan, Lynch, Dankson, the original starting five in the ball game right now. Nice feed to Papashvili for the layup. Pakadze, two assists in the game. Yeah, Pakadze fake right, went left, a great dish. Liberty Christian's got the lead. It's in first lead since early in the first quarter. A little high low. Nice feed down low, shot missed by Gersnich. Rebound, Liberty Christian long outlet. What a feed to Fuller, great pass. Yeah, he led him just like a quarterback leads his receiver. Excuse me, that was Lynch with a layup. Where only Lynch could have got it. That was an excellent pass. And here is a whistle and a foul against Liberty Christian. And that foul is going to go against Travis Dankson. That's his first personal. 7.07 remaining first half. Craven with a three. Strong rebound Dankson. He's Lynch. Out to Picadze, he's going to set up a 25 in the shot clock. Picadze wants a one-on-one. -on -one. Nice spin move, takes it. Oh, and oh, he should have shot it. Tried to feed Papashvili with a 50, with a 90 mile an hour fastball from five feet away, and Papashvili couldn't hold on to it. And I think that's what Coach Franklin was telling him: go ahead and take that shot. Well, you were open. Yeah, the spin move gave him the separation. I mean, I like the I like the idea of a guard trying to get his big man involved, but you got to take that shot. Out of the ball game for Durham goes Sonstang. And again, if it was controlled and, and put up, I would, we would have said, oh, well, good decision. So the fact that it was a turnover made me say I think he should have shot it. Will Belton in the ball game for the first time for the Trojans. Sevdi ignores the pick, drives, floats one up, short, rebounded underneath by Duncan. Durham struggling here in this quarter. Front court, Lynch. Cross court, wide open, Dankson. Three is short. And the rebound to the point guard, Belton. Here's a Craven three. That's short. Nobody's hit from three-point land yet. Just 70 with one. And Craven didn't put any of his legs into that one. It's like an all-arm shot. Got to bend those knees, young fella. Give it up. Lamalfa gets the ball on the left block. He's open. It's poked away. Timid. Seems a little timid down there, Lamalfa. Belton eyed the three and instead is going to pull up from 12. Shot short. Gets his own rebound. That's his second in about a minute. I didn't think he realized how far underneath the hoop he was. 5.45 left in the half. Kodze is going to back it out. This is Lynch left wing. Duncan, Kodze, NBA range three, side of the rim. Papishvili couldn't grab the rebound. Now Durham's got a two on one. This is 70 all the way layup. There you go. Off the schneid for the second quarter here for Durham. Papashvili with the ball on the right block, and he's swatted. Gets the ball back. Pakadze, nice fake of the three, goes in. Papashvili down low, he's fouled. Looks like they have a, little, a good rapport, those two. Yeah, well, they've played on the junior national team for the Republic of Georgia as well over the years, so a lot of familiarity. That like foul is going to go against Gersnich's first. Team sixth. Well, you can, you can see LaMalfa's game, a defensive presence. The offensive game still developing on the block. Yeah, he seems a little bit timid when he gets the ball. I'd like to see a big man a little bit more aggressive. First free throw by Papashvili is good. I mean, that's something that's going to, you know, you, I mean, that's something that's going to evolve for him. You get the sense. That's. Uh, he does have three blocks. Yeah, so making his presence felt, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Papashvili misses the second, one out of two again for the second time of the game. Liberty Christian by two, 4.55 left in the quarter. Pace has slowed down since the opening, huh? Certainly has. There's a 15-footer from the big man, he hits it. Stepped right into that shot, showing some range. And we're tied. 
Both teams still figuring each other out. He's Papashvili. Corner Duncan. Papashvili in the post. Good move. Oh, the bucket and the foul. Like the fake left, went back to the right side. Nice baseline move, and Papashvili to the free throw line. Again, I'm gonna run out of room on my stat sheet. He's filling it up here in the first half. He's got 10. This is his fifth free, tr free throw attempt. No good on the free throw. Lamal for the rebound. Belton pushing. One on three, gotta set it up. Well, there's 70, three-pointer no, Papashvili the rebound. See, that's the problem, Jeff, taking a transition three like that. When you're one on three, you hit the trailer, nobody's down there to rebound. Papashvili, boy, he is feeling it right now. Yeah, going hard, aggressive to the hoop. He draw the foul. Meanwhile, on the ground was Gersnich. Looks like he turned his ankle. Uh-oh. He looks like he's in pain out there. Yeah, boy, that did, I don't know if he stepped on Duncan. Looked Rest. like he might have. Duncan looked apologetic, like, look, I didn't mean to do whatever I did. And I wasn't sure if they just bumped or what, but Gersnich is going to limp to the sideline. And back in the game with the two personals is Bryce Dayroot. So the bench getting a little thin right now for Mark Pacenti. He's in pain. Well, Papashvili is struggling a bit from the free yeah, throw line. I was just going to say, he's, that makes him two for, two for six? That's correct. Free throw number seven coming up. Eight team fouls right now on Durham, so free throws the rest of the way in the first half for Liberty Christian. Free throw no good. Nice rebound, though, by Terrell Fuller, who has a shot blocked. And then the ball is going to be off. Duncan out of bounds. Gonna get a breather for the big man. Papashvili's having a good game. Coach Franklin maybe talking to him about his free throw shooting a little bit. It's a one blemish so far. A couple of those have just been in and out too. 70 front court gives to Craven. Craven out there with Belton, Dayrood, Sevdi, and Lamalfa. Oh, nice job poking it away. Joseph Lynch, he's got the breakaway layup and hits it. Liberty Christian picking up full court against the Trojans. And there's going to be a foul called. And that's the fourth team basket. foul. And that's Picadze with a reach. So that's his second personal. He's gotten in, hasn't been able to get into the flow of the basketball game very much yet. He's sat a couple times just to get a breather. And now picking up the foul. He's probably out for the rest of the half. 335 left. How many fouls? Two. Yeah. He hates to have him pick up his third. He's just got the two points on the two free throws. 22 to 18, our score. Liberty Christian by four. It's a three-pointer for Dayrude off. It wasn't even close. Rebounded by Dankson. Dankson pushing. This is Lynch. He's going to try a three. That shot back iron, dunking the board underneath. And Liberty Christian will reset. Well, or maybe not. They're just going to take a three. That was Danks, and he misses long. Another long rebound goes to Liberty Christian. Now another three. That one no good. Lamal for the rebound. Sometimes you can get too enamored with a three-point shot. Definitely. <laughs> Lamal is going to have one dribble corner. 70 on the drive. 70 floats. 70 shot strong. 234 remaining in the half. We have yet to be in danger of having a shot clock violation in this one. In fact, we could probably have a 15 second shot clock right now and we'd be okay. Maybe Christian's gonna slow it down a little bit. Nice backdoor cut and the foul will be drawn on Craven. That is his second personal. Going to the free throw line, Josh Ellenwood, the freshman 5'7 guard. Liberty Christian doing a good job of taking it inside. 
on their second and third opportunities. And Durham is going to use a 30-second timeout. 2.17 remaining in the half in this boys' Division V championship game. You're following it on CIFnorthern.tv. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports program? Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? You can contact us at info at kbcsports.com. That's info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 for your sports program. Again, that's info at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. Josh Ellenwood at the free throw line. Three players with two personal fouls each for Durham. Craven, Terish, and Dayrude. One, Picadze for Liberty Christian. Free throw good. <laughs> Ellenwood is in the book. Only four players have scored for Durham. Have to get some production off their bench. Second free throw no good. Sevdi has been quiet this quarter, just two points. Only four points in the entire quarter for Durham. Here's the drive. Craven's going to take it all the way. Misses. Rebound underneath by Duncan. I always thought it was hard to go off the glass when you're going straight in. It's one where you want to do the little floater. Collinwood, good ball handling. Finally gives it off to Dankson. Good defense by Durham here. Yeah, they're scrambling everywhere. Duncan fade away 17-footer. No. Lamal for the board. Another big guy who should be taking it inside instead of settling for the jumpers. Oh, and that pass too high from Terrace to Sevdi. A minute 36 left in the half. Duncan the senior, 6'3. Take it inside, big fella. Papashvili back in the ball game. Just got, gave the ball off to Dankson in the corner. It's going to be poked away by Sevdi. Nice curl, Ellenwood floats one over LaMalfa. Good timing on that jump there no. by Ellenwood. No kidding, the kid's giving away over a foot. And gets it over the big center for the Trojans. A minute five to play in the half. Biggest lead of the game for Liberty Christian right now, seven. Yeah, Durham needs a hoop here. They've gone cold offensively. Terrish on the drive, takes it all the way. Layup is good, nice play by the guard. He's got seven in the game. Durham wants to keep this right around five going into the half if they can. Lynch around a screen. All the way, layup strong, Craven the rebound. Look at the little guy get up and board. And here's a numbers opportunity, 70 all the way, layup no, and Dayrude couldn't quite get it on the follow, instead out to Terrish for the three, no. I don't like that shot, you get the rebound, you can make it a held for one there. We got a better shot than that. Shot clock turned off. 18 seconds left in the half. Liberty Christian will go right around eight, maybe seven seconds. This is Dankson. He's got 10. Now he's at eight. Maybe he's going to wait a little longer. He's got six, five. Left side. This is Lynch. Here's Dankson. Long three. Good. Good execution. I, I mean, he was. About four or five feet behind the three-point line. One of those, no, no, oh, good shot. <laughs> that will end the first half of play. Liberty Christian's going to take an eight-point advantage into the break. 28 to 20, our score. We'll be back with the CIF Northern.TV halftime show in just a few moments. Again, the halftime score, Liberty Christian 28, Durham 20, right here on your home for high school sports in the northern section, CIF Northern.TV. 3.16 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow! He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just... <laughs> Holy cow! 
Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30-24. to Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block. Robinson leading the break the other way. Gets it to Grant. Oh. Slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter steps under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run. Breaks through. Four tackles. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64 yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near no the goal line. Second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game. 21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play the senior McMorrow with a huge kick not the longest of his career but the biggest of his career oh, St. Augustine leads it 21 to already 20. lining up they won't even have to run that one more play they just act yeah, yes why bother so there you have it your five-time defending division three champions the Cathedral Catholic Dons Running up over and through Olympian, 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21-17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be 
caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchon in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve, championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's going to bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity. Look for Wallace. No, they go Becker. Hayashi, then tap over and two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace for the match. <laughs> Kathleen Wallace. No better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin, and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hillmore, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation, take a kneel. The clock comes out. The clock will tick down. The players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did, did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 to 6 will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that, hey, we didn't get shut out. So 44 to 6 is your score. And Helix is celebrating on the sideline. Oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended. Two minutes and five seconds left on the clock. Clock rolling, third down and 15 for the Patriots. Dylan, he's got time, steps up. He's going to chuck it deep. He's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you right there. Dylan goes to show why he is a Division I prospect as he's able to step up, elude the pressure, see Collins down the field, and make the connection. As I'll tell you right now, there has not been a bigger catch for Seth Collins this entire season. Fans nervously wait on the far side. Trips right. Halftime here at Acker Gymnasium on the campus of Chico State University where Liberty Christian leads in this boys division five championship game. 28-20 over the Durham Trojans. Let's run you through the halftime scoring. George Papashvili leading all scorers. He's got 12 in the game. Six points for Joseph Lynch. Three for Travis Dankson and Josh Ellenwood. Two for Otar Pekadze and Tyler Duncan. Meanwhile, for the Durham Trojans, they're led by Will Sevdi with nine. Jason Terish has seven. Just two each for Mark Gersnich and Kyle Lamalfa. I'm Jeff Kurtz alongside Ben Schneider. Our producer today is Thomas Conroy and the man running the camera, Justin Barney. Your impressions of the first half, Ben. Durham uh, limited offensively. Sevdi and Terish having a good game, but not much else from the complimentary players. I was just going to say, yeah, they got to get something else besides um, Terrace and Sebdi. Only four other points. LaMoffa with a bucket there in the second, and then uh, Gersnitz with a bucket in the first. So not only do probably LaMoffa and Gersnitz, as starters got to step up, but they got to find some production off the bench. Meanwhile, for Durham, three players with two personal fouls each in the first half. Chris Craven, Jason Terrace, and Bryce Dayrude. They also had... Gersnich, who's got two points in the game, go down with an ankle injury. We'll see if he comes back in. Liberty Christian had Otar Pekadze with two personal fouls midway through the second quarter, so he sat a lot. Pekadze on the floor with Lynch, 
Dankson. Gertzner Zizan back in. Duncan and Papashvili, that's good to see, as here is a quick back door, reverse layup, and look at that. Lynch on the board. Right away as our starting five for Durham includes Lamalfa, Teresh, Sevdi, Derude, and number 11, Sonstang, Trevor Sonstang. And Sonstang with the ball in the corner. Into the post, this one's poked away. Lamalfa comes up with it on the block. Fade away short, and this one's gonna be off Liberty Christian. It looks like uh, an ankle injury keeping him out. He, uh, he's yeah. not back out there. No, he's on the bench. And I don't know if he's freshly taped or what, but we'll see if Gersnich is able to get in the game. Looks like Dave Rude took his place. Into the post, Lamalfa with it. Double team, fade away, 10 footer short. Papishvili the rebound. Just doesn't look comfortable taking that shot. Nice pass. This is Dankson for three. No good. Duncan the board. He and traveled. he traveled. Drag the pivot foot. Good call. Keys to the second half, Ben. I, I mentioned for Durham, they got to get some scoring besides their Teresh and Sevdi. Somebody else has to step up, whether that be off the bench or another one of the starters. Say for Liberty Christian. And get their, you know, get Padazzi going. I think yeah, that's a big one for them. Also, Dankston, you get your guards going. That's just going to open it up for the big men. 70 in the corner goes into Lamalf on the block. And he's going to be blocked by Papishvili. Mixing a pump fake there, big guy. You can see the you post see moves are still developing. Yeah, well, they're, and you can, it's pretty predictable about what he's going to do. Terrish gives to Lamalfa. He's going to put up a 10 footer short, fading away. Yeah. Go straight up. Nice quick passing into the front court. Dump down low. Danks in the bucket. Liberty Christian starting to pull away here. And timeout called by Durham. Good timeout. Don't want it to get away. Remember, they only scored six points in the second quarter. Thir Excuse me, 30 second timeout right here on the floor. I was going to say, after uh, a productive 14 point first quarter, they only got six there, and then so uh, being shut out here so far. So. I'd say get, get the ball to Sevdi, let him make something happen. 28 to 20 was your halftime score, and you're right, 15 to six was the scoring in the second quarter, Ben, and Liberty Christian has come out with four points in the first minute and 32 seconds. And Durham's getting good looks, so it's not a function of forcing shots, they're just not completing them. Terrace across midcourt. Into the post, tough post pass. As Dayrude wasn't quite there, and now a steal. Good Dancing. anticipation there, getting in the passing lanes. Players hitting the floor, and now we've got a jump ball tie up, and we got a timeout called first. Liberty Christian, boy, did they have control of that basketball? They got the 30 second timeout called. Well, the ball was still loose on the floor, it looked like. It did look like that. Either way, kbcsports.com and Play On, the sports network showcase great high school games every week. And now you can access our content using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook. Get the latest KBC and Play On news on Twitter. Or catch our highlights in high definition on YouTube. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media site. Share all the high school action you see every week. Brought to you by your home for high school sports, kbcsports.com and Play On Sports. I'll tell you what, Ben, the quickness of Liberty Christian right now is trumping the height advantage that is enjoyed by Durham. Yeah, and I like the, I like the backcourt duo of uh, Dinkson and Padazzi. They, it seems like uh, those two guys can get the ball into the lane at will. Picadze with the basketball. They feed off each other very nicely as well. Dinkson looking for Picadze, hits him on a back door. He penetrates, floats a shot up, good. Yeah. Just his second bucket, maybe that gets him going. Yeah, he's got four points in the game, two free throws. It's actually his first field goal. Oh, right. And then a turnover forced by Liberty Christian. Sometimes uh, when you're a scorer, all you need is that first bucket, Jeff, and then you really get going. Well, the kid is a scorer and he's a distributor. He's been actually looking to move the ball around to people a little bit more here in this game. There's a backdoor feed and a nice block by LaValfa. Yeah. I'm telling you, big fella developed a little bit of a post game, put on some muscle. You can't teach height. It seems like he's got the skills on defense, got the timing down. That's four blocks already. 
Here's a jumper by Durham. No good, and the drought continues for the Trojans. Yeah, they've been on 20 for a while, even dating back to the last couple of minutes of the first half. Here's Picazzi on the drive. Good nice look. give. And third assist of the game for Picazzi, and Papashvili's got 14. Got to have this. No good. Battle for the rebound. Papashvili gets it. Papashvili, top of the circle. Picadze. Here is a long three ball for Lynch that is an air ball. Lynch needs to, to figure, I mean, he's looked really bad on his three point attempts. He's got that knuckleball rotation. I think he's thinking about it too much as well. You can see the hesitation before he released the right. basketball. Well, I mean, but his threes haven't even been close. 4.25 remaining third quarter. 16 point Liberty Christian lead. Durham still looking for their first points of the second half. There's a lob. LaMalfa leads it short. Should have came down with it first. Terrish gives to Sonstang. He misses. Tap. No. Boy, it's like there's a lid on the rim. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Jeff. They're getting good looks. Being aggressive on the on the boards. Look at LaMalfa lagging to get back. Leaves a gap in the middle. Sonstang gets the rebound after Lynch isn't able to convert. Terrish, nice crossover, but poked away by Dankson. And here is an open bucket, Dankson all the way, layup. And a timeout called by Durham. They have gone more than halfway through the third quarter without a bucket, and as Ben mentioned, it trails back into the second quarter. 38 to 20, our score of Liberty Christian well in front here in the Boys Division Five Championship game. Need a highlight video for your athlete? Working to earn that four-year scholarship? And you want to contact kbcsports.com. We can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches to link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com. Once again, recruits at kbcsports.com or simply give us a call at 619 Six seven seven three two four six. We've got more basketball coming your way today on CIFNorthern.tv. Girls game to follow, Paradise and Oroville. That's tentatively scheduled to begin at 2.30 p.m. Then at 4.15, Enterprise Foothill in Boys Division Three. Girls Division Two at 6 p.m., Pleasant Valley Chico in what seems to be an annual matchup here in Acker Gym. And then at 7.45 p.m., we close with Chico and Shasta. Looking forward to both those Division II games, Jeff. Terrish bringing the ball up the floor. Where are the answers going to come from for Durham? Not on that play. Steal. Turnover. Dankson pump fake. Goes up. Draws the foul. Heady play by Travis Dankson, just a sophomore. What a play smart, Trav. Good job. And Dankson to the line for the first time today. He's got seven points in the game. Can I say I approve of the length of these shorts on the on the uh, Liberty <laughs> you, uniforms? You mentioned that yesterday. You do I, approve. I approve. You I approve. approve. Yeah. Look at that. Yesterday you were giving out demerits for uh, <laughs> shorts being too long, but today it's all good. My partner, broad, broadcast partner Ben Schneider, busts out the ruler and deems them not too low. As long as they're not below the, the half of the knee. Second free throw, no good, as Dankson misses both with the rebound to Duncan. Term just coming unraveled. They're being out-executed at the moment by the Patriots. Durham's head coach, Mark Pacenti, just shrugs his shoulder, says, what, I mean, I don't know what to do. We're not hustling, we're not getting rebounds. Shots aren't falling. Here's Picadze, crossover, pull up 15-footer, short. Duncan, another offensive rebound. We're going to reset. 3.05 left in the third. Excuse me. Danks had made one out of two free throws. 39 to 20 is our score. Cods a nice ball movement. Good dribbling. Takes it into the key. Pump fake. Fade away five footer. In and out. No. Papishvili. Another third offensive rebound in this possession. Yeah. Time of possession is favoring Liberty Christian right here. We've definitely taken the. 
Durham student section out of the game. And they were a little bit of a factor there in the first, making a lot of noise. Godse on the wing. This is Lynch. Lynch followed around by Craven. Nice back door, but Godse, reverse layup left hand, leaves it short. I'm not sure why he <laughs> went with the reverse. No, he had the, the left side of the hoop wide open. I don't know why he chose to go reverse. Tried to get a little flashy there, and Coach Franklin <laughs> smiling at us over here. The mustard came off the hot dog, as Chick Hearn used to say, broadcasting Los Angeles Laker games. Once upon a time, 2.08 left in the third quarter. This is Craven on the drive. Gersnich back in the game for Durham. It's good to see. He's got the ball in the corner after that situation in the first half where he rolled his ankle, but seems to be moving fairly well. Ball knocked away. Well, maybe not quite so much. He's having trouble pushing off on that left ankle, you can tell. Lamalfa puts one up right before the shot clock expires. Rebounded by... Duncan, who's yanked down about five rebounds here in the third quarter. Minute 33 remaining. You know, Coach Pacente going to his bench. I'm surprised he hasn't done that a little earlier. This is just trying to get something that, trying to get a couple guys in there that can get you some points. Well, Dankson takes it to the basket and scores. Eight points this quarter, Jeff, all on layups. 41-20. I love it when a guard doesn't settle for the jumper and takes it to the rack. Durham has been scoreless in this quarter. They have gone on about a 10 minute game time drought right now in terms of points. They're not even getting to the line or anything. They just look disheveled. This one is gonna be stolen. Coming up with a loose ball was Duncan. Plenty of time left in the third, 50 seconds left. And it's just a burning clock situation right now, actually. Lynch has got an untied shoe right in front of us. Hasn't noticed yet. 14 on the shot clock, now 12. Picadze wants to get things started. He's at 10, he's at nine near midcourt. Dribbles right side with six. This is Lynch with the untied shoe. The three ball is another air ball. <laughs> I'm gonna say that's the shoe. <laughs> no, because it's not the first time. He... <laughs> As into the ball game, Will Belton for Durham. And now he sees it, and Lynch is going to get that thing tied. Ellenwood also in. Ellenwood in the game for the Patriots. Here's the drive. Stuck down low, kick out Craven, who's going to take it into the key on the penetration. Dayrude for a three, no, still. Unable to get the ball in. Sevdi is going to be fouled. Papasvili picks up the that I said, Sorry, Jeff. This is a guy that's been quiet that I said had to get going here in the second half. I believe that's the first shot attempt of this quarter, and he gets to the line. Yep, absolutely right. Sevdi to the line for a This is the first free throw attempt of the entire game for Durham. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's, Sevdi, that's why you're down 21. Sevdi had nine points at the intermission. Durham with 10.4 seconds left in the third quarter has yet to score in the second half. And that's still the case as Sevdi misses the first free throw. Boy, when the wheels fall off the apple cart, they fall off the apple cart. I mean, that is really, it has been a, just a struggle offensively for Durham right now. There is the drought ending. The free throw is good and it's a 20 point game. Picadze with a crossover. The take into the key all the way. Layup good. And that ends the quarter. Two times in a row. First to end the half and now to end the third quarter. Liberty Christian comes away with points. 43-21 in this boys Division V championship game right here on your home for high school sports in the northern section. CIFnorthern.tv. Catch the best of catch the best of Northern Section Basketball on CIFNorthern.tv. You can watch a replay of today's game after each one concludes, plus check out game highlights, player of the game interviews, and more. Or order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game. We're your home for basketball for the Northern Section. CIFNorthern.tv. Don't forget to stay tuned for the CIFNorthern.tv post-game show, where Jeff and I will select a player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ballgame. That's coming up following the game on CIF Northern. 
www.ghanaspeed.tv. We'll wrap up this one and get you ready for the D3 girls section title game between the number three seed Paradise taking on the number four seed Oroville. And then the last three games, Jeff, are all one and two seeds. Enterprise Foothill for the D3 boys, Pleasant Valley Chico for D2 girls, and D2, D2 boys, Chico versus Shasta. So this last three games are gonna be dandies. We hope you'll stay with us all afternoon, not only on CIFNorthern.tv, folks, but on YouTube.com slash PlayOnNetwork. It is CIFNorthern.tv, part of the Play On Sports Network. High school basketball and soccer games taking place around the country and throughout California. We're covering them all here on Play On Network, found on YouTube. As we start the fourth quarter of play, Durham unable to convert. They have yet to get a field goal in the second half. Picadze on the floor with Lynch. Duncan Papashvili, Good and pass. here's a nice pass, high-low Papashvili to Duncan, Dankson out there as well, Duncan's got four in the game, meanwhile Belton, Craven, Sevdi, here's Belton, shot no good, Dayrude and Gersnich, who's playing pretty much on one leg right now, they're on the floor for Durham, and Lamouth is going to come in and Gersnich to the bench, that is a game effort by Mark Gersnich, the senior. Unfortunate that he has hurt his leg, but trying to play through it and just not able to push off or do much. Seven fifteen left in the game. Liberty Christian beat Biggs, Mount Shasta, and then Quincy to get here. None of the games were closer than 15 points. And right now they're up 24. Be interesting to see how they do in the Division Five state championships, which will be coming up starting next Tuesday. Picadze with seven on the shot clock, three-pointer no, rebound LaMalfa. Good defense from behind. Picadze stripping that away. Duncan looked like a candidate for high jump in the spring for the track team. He went flying into the air and ended up leaping over a Durham Trojan. LaMalfa for two, shot short, gets his own rebound. Sevdi, and there is the first field goal of the second half for Durham. Durham picking up full court. He's got 12 of their 23. This is just a function of time right now for Liberty Christian. They can burn as much of the shot clock as they like. Papashvili has a shot blocked by LaMalfa. That's five. That's something you learn there as a post player, too, is get the ball in there, kick it out, repost, and right. get the ball deeper. Pump fake, get the foul. That's Here's Duncan. Ten on the shot clock for Picadze, now with eight. Around a pick with six, spin move into the go. Oh, <laughs> what a feed. That was pretty. Liberty Christian really clicking on all cylinders here in the second half. Tyler Duncan, who just got the bucket, forces the turnover. The God say front court, here's Duncan. He'll take it right at the big man, lay up strong, pop his feely the board, he'll kick it out. 5.34 to play. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Papashvili reposts. There you go. George Papashvili. Good move. The spin move going to his left. 16 points in the game for Papashvili, leading his team. And now almost gets the steal. Yes, he does. Tips it to Dankson, who tried to tiptoe down the near sideline right in front of us, but couldn't quite keep it in play. Out of the ball game goes Dayrude. In comes Trevor Sonstang for the Trojans. Yeah. 
Here is Sonstang for three, no. Battle for the loose ball, coming up with it, Terrish gives to, whoa! Gave it to Belton and Duncan came flying in and sent it almost out into the entryway here at Acker Gym. Duncan and uh, Papasvili make a pretty good front court. They do. Not tall, but active. And big, yeah, and athletic. This one's gonna be knocked away by Terrish after the missed shot. Boy, the shooting percentage, we don't have these totals in front of us for right now, for right now, but just one field goal in the second half for Durham. That's what you call ice cold. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's just kind of snowballed, Ben. I mean, a few guys start missing, then everyone starts missing, and right. only Sevdi with points in the second half. He's got three. 4.42 remaining in the game. 49-23 the score. You're following the action on your home for high school sports in the northern section, cifnorthern.tv. Don't forget, you can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. And you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right now on cifnorthern.tv. Click on Buy DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by cifnorthern.tv. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on cifnorthern.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. Well, I'll tell you what, Durham is going to look back at their shooting in this game. I don't know if that will be the the main difference. I, I mean, they certainly, you know, if you aren't making any shots and you aren't getting any points, you aren't going to win a basketball game. But it's hard to determine where it is they went wrong because it's not like they're forcing shots or necessarily rushing the offense. No, you're right. No, just, just a collective day where everyone goes cold, it looks like. They've turned it over a lot, too, which led to a lot of Liberty uh, fast break points. Dankson's going to be fouled in the backcourt. Not many fouls. That's only the third foul of the second half for both teams combined. And that one's going to go against Belton, his first. Picard say with 30 on the shot clock is going to set up the offense. Works some clock here. Well, Durham crowd trying to get their team back into it by chanting defense. I get the sense that Liberty Christian could pretty much just run sh shot clock down on their next series of possessions. They don't even have to take a shot, and they could still win this ball game up by 26. Picard say a deep three. No good, rebounded underneath by Sonstang, who gets tied up, gets the basketball back, then turns it over. Now they well, can reset, this take is, another 35 off the clock. This is a far cry from last year's game where it went into overtime in a classic. Instead this year, Liberty Christian well in front. Three balls strong, and over we got over the back. Yep, Dankson picks up his second personal. They still took off about a minute and a half of clock time there in that, on just on that possession. Liberty Christian, last one in 2009 when they beat Tule Lake in overtime, 54-50. They're here seemingly every year. You got to go all the way back to 2005 when Liberty Christian was not in a championship game. Otherwise, they are here repeatedly. This is an almost an annual event. Like the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> or the church death, picnic. Death taxes <laughs> and Liberty Christian in the section title game. Yep, pretty much. 3-10 to play. I'm just, I can't get over the fact they only have three points this half. Yeah, and that's Durham, folks. 20 points at the half. They had a great first quarter. Yeah. They were actually leading 14-13. And they enjoyed a five-point advantage at one point in the first quarter. Here's Sevdi taking it all the way. Floats a shot up. He's the only guy that scored oh, in the second half for Durham. That was the guy at, at halftime I said had to get it going. Well, he's got five in the second half to go along with nine first-half points. 
14 of his team's 25. 2.35 to go. Liberty Christian, both of these teams make the state championship tournament. The winner hosts a home game. The loser goes on the road in the northern region. The God say with 10 on the shot clock. Wants a clear out on LaMalfa with six, with five. And he's going to kick down low on the drive. The pull-up shot from the newly checked in Ryan Duncan. Tyler's younger brother doesn't go. Sonstang blocked by Ryan. And we've got a foul as well. Sonstang to the free throw line. And that foul is going to go against Ryan Duncan. 2.03 remaining, 49-25 the score. Folks, stay tuned for the CIF Northern.TV postgame show as Sonstang hits the first free throw. Where we will have an interview with our player of the game from the victorious Liberty Christian Patriots as in the game Nathan Wild and Terrell Fuller checking in. Also in there, Nick Filarde. Second free throw good for San Sting as well. Otar Pekadze stays on the floor. What a run it's been for Pekadze and George Papishvili. A long way from home, but they are about to complete their senior year with a Northern Section Division Five championship in another minute and 47 seconds. That one is going to be a little bit too much for Fuller to handle. And Picadze is going to come out of the game, and he will get a well-deserved ovation from the Liberty Christian fans as Brody Gill will replace him in the lineup. Three-pointer by Terrish No, and the rebound to Gill. So only uh, 70 scored here in the second half. Steal by Terrace. He's got a two on one. Give back Terrace Lamb. 20 point game. Minute 10 to go. Fuller's going to take it up. Strong. Dunk in the follow. Blocked. And the rebound to Durham. Nice follow by Lamalfa. Timeout called by Durham. As Coach Pacenti wants to get a few of his players who don't normally get playing time into the game, that is a class move yeah. as both coaches clearing their benches. Yeah, it really is. 50 seconds to play. What a performance by Liberty Christian. Yeah. And especially players like who don't normally, uh, Otar Pekadze is the team leader, but Dankson has had an excellent game. Lynch and George Papishvili carrying them in the scoring column in the first half. Yeah, Dankson has 11 points. Eight, eight in the third, where they really took control of this one. He was big. He was a big part of that third quarter. George Papashvili leading all scores on both teams with 16 in the final game in the northern section in his senior year. Into the game is DeAndre Fuller, Terrell's brother. And also in Christian Staples. Staples, Gill, and, and DeAndre Fuller getting called up from the JV. And now they're seeing some playing time in a championship game. A vision to the future for Patriots fans. 35 seconds to play. There's the follow. Nice job by Seth Radler. The senior guard gets a bucket and gets in the book. And the crowd erupted, too. Emil Thompson in the game. Let's get everybody mentioned here. Adam Amani. Craven stays in the ball game, as does Sonstang. Well, that is always a great thrill. Even though your team isn't going to win, you can carry that and every conversation you have with friends for the rest of the time of your life. Yeah, I scored in a section championship game. I got two. One of the other kids on my team didn't have two. In fact, right now, Radler is the only one other than Terish and Sevdi who scored in the second half. Right. Yeah. Craven at the free throw line with seven seconds remaining. 49-33 the score. There's Craven getting in the book. 
Again, folks, stay tuned for the post-game show where we will have an interview with our player of the game for the victorious Liberty Christian Patriots. Craven doesn't even dribble. He just steps up and shoots. Rebound, follow, in and out. No for Amani. Three seconds left, and we've got a whistle and a foul. And now going to the free throw line is Emil Thompson in his senior year. These are kids who put in the work for four years. They probably don't get a lot of playing time at the varsity level, but they're getting a chance right now. Yeah, it's great to see. Part of what high school sports is all about. And as much cheering for Thompson right now from the fans of Durham, the student body in particular, what support for a classmate. That it was like he was just tied the ball game up right there. I know, right? What a great ending. It's a great win for Liberty Christian and a great show of sportsmanship by Durham fans cheering on their team. 49-36 the final. Liberty Christian Patriots are your boys Division 5 champion. Congratulations to Todd Franklin, his staff, and all the kids on the Patriots. Well, folks, stay tuned again for the post-game show. We will be back after the awards ceremony with an interview with our player of the game from Liberty Christian as they win it 49-36 over Durham. Back with more in just a few moments. Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Noland. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs and Jordan Lertik will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down two nothing, facing adversity, and they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attacked there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call! Ah! Winner, oh. it's the over the, over the net call. Oh my goodness. Balls back, reached over on the attack. A Maverick error wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving and oh baby! Shrigley with the jam and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul and listen to these fans. Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a hand off to Zeller trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way as he's at the 10, 5, touchdown. Patrick Zeller. God, he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines, and he was in a foot race, and he went all the way for the touchdown. Broke a tackle and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes the snap, play action to Campbell. Looks down the field. Now here comes the pressure. He's going to be hit. He breaks the tackle, rolls left. Now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. And reasonably so, he's been doing a good job of leading this offense. Looking for his first touchdown pass of the season for Ray Hudson, and Ray Hudson gets both feet inside the end zone. Touchdown for him. Like you said earlier, it's 6-2 body frame, and can probably in what, you, what we just saw there was getting Randy Moss, was what we call getting Moss. Um, clearly just leaped over the defender there. 
Landed both feet in, feet in bounds. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last minute. Muller trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, Cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rodeball. no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 25-19, Foothill wins it three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he he um, he can make things happen here in this ball game. They will go with him. Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear to Tory territory. The 25, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what, there were at least three times on that on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there, cost cost La Jolla Country Day as Bola Graft, the freshman running back for Bishops, is able to take it in. And and that was a determined run there, Andy. By so first and ten, Brandon Lewis in the shotgun has time to throw. And he will fire, and he has a mad diving catch. Did he hold on to it? He did. What a catch from Kendall Keys. And that may be the KBC Sports Player of the Week. <laughs> what a catch, by he laid himself wow. out there. And a great throw, as you said. Read, read it nicely to Lewis and really caught his receiver on the go and just kind of put it out there right on the outstretch of his fingertips. He laid out, and he made it. He might be called upon to make a crucial kick. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain on the receiver screen. And Ooh. Paulson fires across the right seat for Jack Finney, who makes the catch. Stiffs on the defender at the 50, and is finally brought down at the Amador Valley 45-yard line. Flags flying late They're on the go play. For fourth and three. They figure three is easier to get than the field goal at this point. And it's Paulson looking for Finney. Right seam, side, right seam, touchdown. Jack Finney makes the catch. Bounces off a defender. A 23-yard pass and catch from Paulson to Finney. And the Foothill Falcons are back out in front. They certainly are. Finney lining up a tight end. I had a feeling that Paulson was going to look right side there as Chase Miller was lined up. Receiver far side. But instead it was Finney straight to the post. And Paulson picks him out in stride again. The third catch on the drive for Finney. give it to Tyree on an exchange against the zone. Do a little three-man weave. This is Tyrell back with it. Back here on CIFNorthern.tv, Jeff Kurtz joined by our player of the game for the victorious Liberty Christian Patriots. George Papashvili led his team with 16 points. This young man to my left from the Republic of Georgia, and he said to me, my English isn't very good, but your game certainly spoke for you tonight on the floor. What was it like playing in this championship game and winning this year? It was an amazing feeling. We worked so hard all year, and we paid for it. I mean, we did our best, we ran floor, we listened to coach, so it feels amazing to me. Only one loss the whole season. Have you had a chance to think about that and what that means to go through a season and only lose one game? We listen to coach, so it's all it takes to win a game. Listen coach. How hard has it been for you and Otar to be on the other side of the world, going to high school, playing here, being away from your family, has that been difficult for you guys or have you seen it as a real growing experience? It was a growing experience, but we had so many people here, like next to us, they were helping us all the time. So it's my second house. <laughs> it's nice to have a house in California, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so talk about your game, George, because it's really improved from over the years, having now covered you in this championship game three years in a row, maybe having a, a small role two years ago to being a major factor this year. What have you worked on between last season and this season that allowed you to improve so much? We just, uh, like I said, we just listened to coach. It was hard to listen to coach and do stuff, whatever he was telling us last year, but for me, because I was young. But since I'm senior, I learned how to play, and he taught me everything. So The definition of being coachable, even though you don't want to, you follow what the coach says, it certainly paid off today. George, how are you guys going to celebrate this win? Have you given that any thought? I don't know yet. <laughs> we'll find out. Anyone you want to say hi to back in Georgia, this is going on around Everybody the world. Everybody in Georgia who knows me, 
who does not hi I'm really happy and it's an amazing day in my life George Papashvili our CIF Northern TV player of the game and a boys division 5 champion for Liberty Christian thanks so much for joining us thank you we'll be back wrapping up here on the post game in just a moment please stay with us Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs and Jordan Lertique will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 nothing, facing adversity, and they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attack there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call! Ah! Winner, oh. it's the over the, over the net call. Oh my goodness. Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick error wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and it, oh baby! Shrigley with the jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. I think he's drooling, somebody get that man a napkin. Ooh. Wrapping up here, you can see the girls getting ready for the Division three championship game set to tip off at 2.30 p.m. Number three, Paradise versus number four, Oroville. I'll have the call along with Thomas Conroy here in just a few moments as we wrap up from the Boys Division Five championship game, 49-36, Liberty Christian beats Durham. Paradise and Oroville in just a few moments here on your home for high school sports in the northern section, CIFNorthern.tv.